Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. Today I decided to clean up some of my RF testing harness and release it as a tool named RF Crack, mostly because it's been a pain to set up all of these use case scenarios separately. Rather than release a tool no one knows how to use, this will be a quick tutorial to get you started. If you have been following my blogs, this will greatly simplify your testing in the following ways. RF Crack handles all of your data conversions. It allows you to capture, replay, and save payloads for use anytime. It will handle rolling code bypass attacks on your devices. You can jam frequencies and fuzz specific values. It will also allow you to scan specific frequencies in discovery mode or incrementally probe them. RF Crack will hopefully have keyless entry and engine bypass support in the near future. I'm currently researching these topics. Let's get right into its usage without going into too many details about the attacks. 90% of these attacks I've already shown you before, and those I haven't will be in an upcoming RF hacking course or possibly explained later on in this blog. The first thing you should do is take a look at the help documentation with the minus H. In here are the useful arguments, such as uppercase letters, which generally change the radio parameters, and lowercase letters that designate attacks and various items needed for attacks. We also have usage examples in here and how to run replay attacks, rolling code attacks, jamming, and various scanning features. One of these scanning features is the TAC K, which is the known frequencies. In this case, we chose 433 and 315 as the default. It will keep scanning through here, looking for different transmissions. In this case, it found one on 315. If we hit the Enter key, we will get out of there, and we can use a TAC K TAC lowercase f, and we can designate our own list of frequencies to scan through. We can then hit the enter button and break out of here. Next up, there is a minus b, which is a brute force, and it goes by an incremental value. So we can use a minus v for the value and enter our value here. This will increment on every cycle by that number. And then we can do a TAC capital F with 315000000 as our starting. Once we do that, it'll start at 315. It'll go up by five each time, and it'll roll through until we end it. We can easily end this by hitting the Enter key. And this is a good way to just start scanning if we have no clue what we're looking for. I will probably set this up for logging in the future. But for right now, let's take a look at the replay attacks. The TAC I on the command line stands for instant replay attack. We can add a frequency in there and hit our doorbell. You'll see our transmission there. If we say we want to return this payload, we have an option of replaying it. You'll hear the alarm in the background. We also have a option of saving this capture. If we hit yes, it will automatically name the file. We can copy and paste that and we can use a TAC S command the tech s command will read from the capture and replay it automatically. Let's give that a shot. We're also using the minus u, which stands for upload. And we're putting our frequency in here to make sure that we send it on the same as which we received it. This is an option to just send it once or to just keep fuzzing it out there. For example, if we were to try to disable the motion sensor like we did in one of the previous videos, we can use the F command. Let's give that a shot. When we do that, you'll see it transmit it once and then it'll keep transmitting it and you'll keep hearing the doorbell ringing. I'm going to hit control C to kill that. I need to actually set that up to fail gracefully. We can easily implement a jamming attack with the tech J and the frequency we want to jam. When we hit enter, it'll escape out of there. The jamming attack is also integrated with a rolling code attack. We can give that a shot. I set up a camera in the other room on a key lock running at 433 with rolling code. I have the clicker here. If I start the rolling code attack, it captures the first and second packet, and then it replays the first one. You saw the light. 
If I send it again, it will replay the second one, indicating that I would have been able to open the door later on. I didn't choose the resend option, it would have given me a saving option and I could send it with the tack S later on. In this case, I already just used it during the replay attack, so the code is no longer useful. If we take a look at the tack A minus 8000, this is just the variance between where we're sniffing and where we're jamming. Also note, this attack is a little bit flaky and distancing does matter. Also, there's other settings that you can change such as the RSSI settings on up and down values in order to determine a range of values that are acceptable for a capture. I'll put some examples within the readme on how to use these. Before I end this video, there are a couple other values that are useful. For example, if I change a couple things in the command line from above, I can also just do a rolling hood attack on my Subaru running mod 2FSK. You really don't have to change all that much, just change the frequency, change the modulation type, and let it rip. You can find a link to the code in the description below. If you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time.